world that historically has had bad role models for young girls and members of the LGBTQ community. While this representation has been improving, it still has a long way to go. We are here today to talk to you about some of the characters that were supposed to be our role models when we were younger and now. Here are some examples of good and bad representation of LGBTQ plus and female characters in media. Let's start with the one and only Albus Dumbledore from J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter. I'm sure many of you know this character, but one thing some of you may not know is that J.K. Rowling announced that Dumbledore was gay way back in October of 2007, right after the release of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. However, Dumbledore's sexuality is almost never given the chance to even be acknowledged throughout the books. The one time the possibility of him having any named lover is somewhat considered is when his and the dark wizard Grindelwald's relationship is discussed. They were said to have been strangely close, Dumbledore almost leaving his younger siblings to go off with Grindelwald, but eventually deciding not to due to the death of his younger sister. It's ever so slightly implied they could have had a romantic relationship. Even in the prequel movies, where Rowling had the opportunity to make it clear that Dumbledore was gay, he is never shown to be explicitly so, though he does say he and Grindelwald were closer than brothers. Of course, this could change with the release of the new Fantastic Beasts movies. Let's move on to Shira. The first episode of the original Shira was released all the way back on September 9th, 1989. Netflix recently released a reboot of the show on November 13th, 2018 making express changes to the characters and their designs to make them more inclusive. Many of the characters are now LGBTQ+, like Katra and Adora, the two main characters of the show. This is significant because it increases the diversity in the field of entertainment media and shows that even old shows can be remade to drastically increase the amount of LGBTQ characters represented in the media. So why is this representation important? Well, in the world we live in, there are people of all different races, ethnicities, religions, genders, sexualities, etc. Ideally, every show would include characters that are intersectional, characters that are a mix of different things. One way to think about this is to picture an intersection in the road, where all the intersecting, intersecting streets are different parts of a person's identity. For example, a character that's an intersection could be a cisgender woman, bisexual, African-American, and on the spectrum. But there are tons of ways for a character to be an intersection. Another thing about LGBTQ plus representation is that oftentimes when a show, show or movie has queer characters, they're either lesbian, gay, or bisexual, as well as cisgender. Therefore, you rarely see, say, asexual characters, aromantic, pansexual, omnisexual, gender fluid, and more. Trans people are also more underrepresented in the media compared to lesbian, gay, and bisexual characters as well. GLAD's 2020 Where We Are on TV report found 29 trans characters, 15 trans women, 12 trans men, and two non-binary characters throughout cable, streaming, and broadcasting. In comparison, GLAD found 99 bisexual plus characters throughout all three categories. Another example of p trans people being underrepresented in the media is the She-Ra reboot. In the show, only three out of 23 LGBTQ plus characters are trans, and even then, one of them isn't really confirmed, and one of the others isn't even human. GLAD also only found one expected asexual character throughout broadcasting, streaming, and cable. The, unfortunately, details surrounding the show containing the expected asexual character were not available at time of printing of the report. Let's move on to gender roles. Have you ever noticed that while watching a good portion of popular movies and TV shows, the female and male characters are often portrayed very differently? As an example, let's look at the animated film Beauty and the Beast from Disney. In it, there are two characters, Belle and Gaston, that we will be talking about. Gaston is drawn to be a very strong, muscular man, while Belle is designed as a very delicate, weak female character, like a rose. This representation is not good because it shows young girls that they should let the boys be the strong ones from a very young age, which can have lasting impact on how they view themselves in relation to guys in the future. Next up, let's talk about Annabeth Chase from Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. Annabeth is the daughter of Athena, goddess of wisdom and battle strategy, and head counselor of the Athena cabin at Camp Half-Blood. She is incredibly smart and can easily hold her own in a fight. After we read the Percy Jackson series, we began to look up to her. She embodied, at least to us, what it meant to be strong and independent. An example of this comes from the third book of the Heroes of Olympus series, The Mark of Athena. 
Near the end, Annabeth manages to trick Arachne, an expert weaver from Greek mythology, into trapping herself in her own Arachne's creation. At the time, Annabeth had a fairly injured ankle and hadn't seen any of her friends in quite some time. Even so, she managed to defeat Arachne using only her mind and Arachne's own skills, allowing her friends to secure the object they had come for once said friends arrived. Not all movies portray girls as being dumb and helpless. One great example of this is in the character of Hermione Granger from Harry Potter. Hermione is shown right off the bat to be a smart, know-it-all kind of girl, but she only lets us get the better of her a couple of times, and it's almost always in the first couple movies, where she's still a lot younger. One early example of this is in the first book, where she talks about how she read Hogwarts a History, and voices her confusion when she learns that she is one of the only kids in her grade who actually read the book. On top of that, she is incredibly resourceful, which is shown in the last book, when Ron tells Harry, we would be dead by now if it weren't for Hermione, referring to how she kept them alive with her knowledge while they were on the run. By portraying a character like this, J.K. Rowling succeeded in showing girls that they can be smart and not ashamed about it, in contrast to the previous character of Belle, somebody shamed for being smart and liking reading. In conclusion, while we believe there are moderately good examples of representation, the world of entertainment media still has a long way to go before we have equal representation. When it comes to LGBTQ plus representation, it has improved significantly, but it is still quite difficult to find trans representation as well as pan, ace, arrow, gender fluid, and omni representation, for example. In nearly stark contrast, the representation of girls in media has improved significantly at a much more drastic rate. However, this is not to say that we don't still need to work on creating positive and accurate representation. Hopefully, in the future, we will each be able to see ourselves represented well throughout all forms of media, whether that be a book, TV show, movie, or other form of entertainment. Thank you. Thank you.